Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the course, How to Use Zebra HZ. This is video eight, and today we're talking about the fall rise knob in the envelope module. So let's right click, go to init preset. Now we have our attack, decay, sustain, and release, and hopefully that makes sense right now. So now we have a fall and a rise knob over here. So basically, if we turn this knob to the left, the signal is gonna fall after the sustain. And if we turn it to the right, the signal rises to the attack level after the sustain. So for the first one, if we turn this to the left, the signal falls after the sustain. So normal behavior would be something like this. Let's bring our sustain down just a little bit and our decay. So we're sustaining at about negative 22. And we're holding down the note and it's sustaining and we let go and that initializes our release phase. So if we turn this to the left to have it fall after it hits the sustain level, it's just going to fall automatically. And that speed is indicated by this value here. So if we wanted it really fast, we would give it more value and it falls pretty quick after the sustain. And then just a little bit of value, maybe like negative six, negative eight, something around there, it's gonna go much slower. So it's falling here. Now, if we turn this to the right, the signal is going to rise to the attack level after the sustain. So if we had a lower sustain value over here, let's see without this. So the sustain now is gonna be around negative 26, negative 25 around that area, right? So if we turn this to the right here, it rises to the attack level after it hits the sustain. And the faster you want to go, you turn this more to the right. So that's the basic concept of this fall and rise. Now here's where it starts to get tricky. So we have here in this none category, we select this here and now we have sust2. So this is basically a second sustain level. So we have attack, decay, sustain, and then after the fall and rise, we have a next sustain, and then we have our release phase. So it's a little complicated to wrap your head around, but let's say we have our sustain somewhere around here, which is gonna be negative, let's do negative 22, something like that, okay? So we have negative 22 for our main sustain level. So if we increase this just a little bit like that, maybe have this go kind of quick here. So now here is gonna be the second sustain level. And if we do this kind of slow, so we have our first sustain at 22 and then it falls, and then it's gonna find our next sustain level, which is right here, negative 33 maybe. And that's our second sustain level. So it goes attack, decay, sustain, fall and rise, and then it goes to our second sustain and it holds it there. And then after we let a key go, then it goes to our release phase. Now what's cool about this, let's say for our first sustain, we go kind of low. And for the second sustain, we go kind of high, right? And let's see what this sounds like. So it's an interesting concept, right? So we're going to attack decay, a very low level of sustain, and then it goes to our fall rise, and then it goes up to our second sustain, which is a higher value. So it goes up, and then it decays downwards, and then it rises back to the second sustain, and then we have our release phase. So definitely take some time to play around with this because it's a very interesting concept of how envelopes work. It's not just a basic envelope. Okay, so let's go back to an init preset and talk about the other ones here. So we're gonna get to the loop ones in just a second. So we have rel 25, 50, 75, and 100. So this is a second release stage. So it's an extra release that we have for our envelope. And the numbers indicate the percentage of maximum value. So let's go to 25 here and let's maybe drag down our decay a little bit and our sustain and hold down a note and see what happens. Let's change this here, deviate just a little bit here. So it's fading out, it's fading out, right? It's going slow, it's going slow, and I'm still holding down the note. And then once I let go, there's another little release phase there. So this second release stage is indicated by the MIDI note off message. So once we let go of a key. So for example, let's have our main release kind of kind of fast, and then this one kind of long. We hit a note, it has a slow release, and then once it fin finishes the second release stage, then it's gonna go to our final one. So our second release here, or the final one, let's have this one kind of quick and then the first one pretty long here. So let's hit a note. It's a slow release, I let go, right? It's slow release and at some point it's gonna finish and then that's when, it, when the quick one happens, that's gonna be our last one. So it's kind of interesting. So let's put this main release a little bit longer too and maybe this one a little bit shorter. So it has a, has a quick release and then it has a slow release as it goes into it. And this indicates basically, like I said, the, the maximum amplitude in percentages. So this is 25%, 50%, 75, and 100. 
So a good way to see this right here, if we go to a knit, go down to maybe a short decay, a shorter sustain, something like that. And let's go to release 25, deviate a little bit here and let's hold down a note. And it fades all the way out. And let's see where the signal pops up here. So about negative 30, let's give it a little bit longer time here. A little bit shorter decay as well. And we let go. So about negative 28. Now if we increase this from rel 25 to rel 50, it's gonna be a higher value. So about negative 22. And then so on and so forth, release 75. We have negative 19 about, something like that. And then 100, which is gonna be a one-to-one, -one, so the maximum amplitude. So negative 16 in this case. And if you're more of a visual learner, there's very interesting guides that the manual has as far as the stages of the envelopes and how these affect the different stages. So route 100, 75, 50, 25, and so on and so forth. So now let's talk about the looping here. So let's go back to a NIP preset, and then we have loop A, loop D, and loop S. So this is basically going to be a looping envelope, and this is determining where it's gonna loop back from. So our normal envelope behavior is something kind of like this, right? Attack, decay, sustain, and then release. So if we go to loop A, something like this, let's maybe make this a little bit faster. It's basically looping back this envelope and it's looping back at the attack phase. So if we have a slower attack, something kind of like this, maybe a quicker decay. Now we want to change this Instead of looping at the attack, let's loop at the decay. And see, as I move the decay knob, it's changing where it's looping, or not where it's looping, but the, the time it takes. And then we have, as you guessed it, the loop sustain. And it's looping at the sustain level. So yeah, a very interesting concept with the fall and rise. I don't think you'll most likely be using this very often, but it's good to know that it's there and what it does. And like I said before, in the manual, there's some really nice diagrams to visually kind of show you what's happening as far as each stage goes, as far as where it's looping at here, the different releases, the second release stage, and so on and so forth. But uh, yeah, that's basically the fall and rise here. Interesting, cool concept. So hopefully you learned something, and we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.